fight? Against the Knights of the Round? Are you mad? Are you not confident with your abilities? Morgan stared at Archer, stirring her tea with a frown. Because of the spirit's attempt to not participate. Well, perhaps that's one. These are the Knights of the Round after all. So, my table is superior. Morgan puffed with a pout. Don't get me wrong, it's just... Archer paused before he sighs. Very well, he submitted, still unsure to follow through, but yet he has no choice of his own in the end. That's good, I'm confident we'll win this match. Morgan smiled. Victory is in my grasp. Archer! Yes, your highness, spoil me. What? The bowman simply stared at his master. Spoil you? Yes, I say I deserve some praise and worship. Especially from my familiar. Who hasn't praised me at all? Morgan frowned. What do you want me to do exactly, master? Me hmm, will get Morgan thought, going into a thinking position. What do you usually spoil people with, huh? Like you, personally. How do you spoil someone? Archer went silent. I spoiled my guardian back when I was alive with food. Hmm. So you spoil people with food, huh? Yes, that is acceptable of sorts. Anything else? I also spoiled my older sister, Archer said, but paused. He frowned a bit on the inside thinking about her. And how did you spoil her? Well, she would enjoy it when I patted her head. Or well, when I paid attention to her, she sounds more like your little sister, Lullican. Lullican? Oi, oh, I'm no Lullican. Archer bit back but sighs. I guess you can say she acted like a little sister, but at the same time she also acted like an older one when needed to. Archer tried to think back to the golden days of that house. Those memories of his life, she sounds unique. Perhaps you can introduce me to her later on. That won't be possible. Come now, you may be in a different universe or a hero of another world, but know that my magic can do things that are beyond mankind's capabilities, or do simply not wish for me to meet her few. You've got the wrong assumption. It's not that I wish for you not to meet her. Regardless, I think I would prefer you didn't, Archer said. But the thing is, you can't meet someone who doesn't exist in the world any more. Doesn't exist. She's gone, Archer said. My condolences. Morgan said with her show of respect, I shouldn't have talked about such a topic. It's fine. You didn't know any better, Archer said. Well, regardless, must I spoil you? Why not do it yourself? Because, dear familiar, it does not feel the same when it is I spoiling myself. Fine, fine. Such a troublesome master. Pat, pat! Is there, Archer said as his hand was on top of Morgan's head, patting her as the woman only was silent. Now then, he let his hand move away, but was pulled back as Morgan held to his. No, not yet. Archer closed his eyes. Very well then, your highness. The door opened to reveal Melusine, who paused at the sight of the two. I'll come back later. She apologized and left. This is a misunderstanding of whatever you're thinking. But Archer was late as the doors shut. Why me? What's wrong familiar? They might get the wrong idea, that's what. Archer remarked as he continued to pat her head. Satisfied yet? No. When I say I'm satisfied, you'll know when. For now, continue. Morgan declared. Besides, what's wrong with them getting the wrong idea? I don't mind the misunderstanding our relationship, Foo-Foo. Archer rolled his eyes. Such a troublesome master, he said. But Morgan only chuckled. The blush on his face made her want to tease him more. What now? When she opened her eyes to this dream-like world, she found herself in a new location. The place was brighter. This location was not like the burning city that she saw before. But instead, where she found herself was in a room she saw as these mysterious machines of sorts was all around. The sounds of beeping and so forth caught her attention. Though she turned her head to the thing that stuck out to her the most, she saw the boy from before, in a bed, a blanket over him as he looked around. So he was saved, after all. Thank you. She heard the sound from outside the door as it then opened, revealing the man from before. She saw as he walked in and went to Shiro. How are you feeling? The doctor said that you'll be let out soon. I'm fine. That's good. What is your name? Shiro. I see. What is your last name? I. I don't remember. I see. The man only let out a dry, dejected chuckle. Listen, would you rather prefer to stay at the orphanage, or would you like to come with me? With you. I see, the man said. Thank you, the man said with relief. His body relaxed as he looked at the boy. 
By the way, the man leaned forward and whispered, I'm also a mage. Shiru only looked in awe at the man. Morgan opened her eyes as she rose from her bed. She blinked a few times. Another dream, huh? This time a continuation of the previous one that she saw. Shirao? Hmm. That name sounds foreign, certainly not one from Britain's, so she can only conclude that these memories are from another country. The boy was saved. This time the dream was shorter. The aftermath of the fire would lead the boy into some sort of infirmary. Those machines, she's never seen such machines in her life. Shirao who? she asked herself, staring at the ceiling. The name fits the boy. Yes, this Shira that she keeps seeing in her dreams, alongside that man that has yet to be revealed of his name. They both interested her. Her eyes gleamed as she thought of the two. When she has her eyes on something that piques her interest, she won't stop until she learns fully. Just like how Archer fascinates her. Though, now that she thinks of it, these dreams started happening as soon as Archer appeared. It's surely just a coincidence, right? Unless...